Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at Option Alpha, and what I want to do in this video is go over um, a topic that is rarely covered, it seems, uh, in clarity, uh, but is definitely one of the biggest questions I get with coaching students and comments on the blog, and that's when to take profits on stock and options trades, or really, the biggest question is when to leave the trade open and try to get a little bit more money. Now, I know that there's a big age-old adage in uh, trading that is let your winners run and cut your losers short. Um, but that doesn't always necessarily mean that, that uh, it's a great time to, to leave the trade on when your technicals are telling you that you need to get out of the trade. Um, I think that I see a lot of beginning traders have trouble with this because they see a quick profit and what they want to do is immediately get out of the trade and quote-unquote make their money. And what they end up doing over the long run is that they let their losers ride and hope that their losing trades will eventually turn into a profitable trade when they should be cutting their losers short very, very quickly. So what I'm going to do in this video is kind of go over what I do to analyze the markets. I'm a big technical guy, as you guys know. I don't like to trade on my emotions. So I'm going to show you a bunch of indicators you can use to help make the decision a lot easier for you a lot more systematic on your entry and exit points for stock and options trades. Now, as always, I like to say that the best thing you can do to start to exit a trade and to start to take profits is, of course, either put on stop loss orders, trailing stop loss orders, or get out of half of the position altogether before the market really moves against you. Again, this is just a great way to scale out of a position. So let's go to my chart here. And I'm actually looking at a chart of uh, Goldman Sachs back in February, March of 2010 here. I think this is a really easy chart to look at right now. And it helps drive home the idea um, of using these technicals. Now I have a MACD with a histogram laid over this chart on the bottom side here. So with the MACD histogram, the big signal that you always want to get with this is you want to get this black line here crossing above this red dotted line. So you have the faster moving average crossing above the slower moving average, and that gives you a buy signal. And then on the top side, you want to have the MACD crossing the black line of the MACD crossing below the red line, and that gives you your sell signal. Now, again, the idea behind this is that you just want to get in and out of trades at more likely areas where they're going to turn, right? So you don't want to trade short a stock that you can clearly see has a bullish indicator on it. Vice versa, you don't want to go long a stock now all the way up here in the high 70s when MACD is clearly showing that this thing could be starting to roll over. So the idea behind this is to remove your emotions from the trade and help and make the uh, indicators make the decision of getting out of the trade or staying in the trade a lot easier for you. So what I'm going to do actually is kind of scroll back just a little bit and go to the beginning and just kind of go through this trade with MACD here. Now you can see that when Goldman Sachs was trading in the uh, mid to lower 50s here back in February, we did get a very good bullish signal on MACD to go long Goldman Sachs. So whether you went long with stocks or options really doesn't matter. But at this point, it's safe to say that let's say you went long right at 150 is your effective price. So we're going along in February and you can see that Goldman is trading higher slowly but surely and all of a sudden hits the 165 mark. Now a lot of traders would just get out of this trade simply because they made some good money. They bought it at 150, it's now at 165, they made good money on the trade and that'd be the end of it. But you can see here on the indicator that we still have a very bullish trend in place. So there's no technical reason to get out of this trade at this point. So what you want to do is either do one of two things, move up your stop loss, say up to 160 or trailing stop loss up to 160 with a $5 gap, or you can start to slowly exit the position. Say you have 10,000 shares, you want to sell off maybe 2,000 or 3,000 shares, take a little bit of profit off the table, but leave some money invested. Now we continue along with the cycle here and we don't ever really get a trading signal to sell until this day back in the end of March. And you can see that Goldman had made another $15 move from where most traders would have gotten out of the trade here at 165. So now you have a trade that you bought at 150 and now it's up at 175. Now this is a good area to take profits on because the technicals are telling you to take profits. It's not your emotion that's telling you to take profits. 
The ironic thing is, and most traders will point this out, is that actually after this point, I haven't showed you this on the chart, but Goldman actually made another little pop higher into the 180 range, and you can see that here. But this is still a good area to take profits. You always will see stocks that may move higher or lower than we expect. But again, overall, if you're consistent and systematic with your trading, that's how professionals do it. They take profits when they know they should take profits. They get into and out of trades when technicals tell them to. And so even though Goldman made a pop up to 80 here, you can see it wasn't long before Goldman was right back down in the 50s. So this was a very good technical indicator. Sure, you might have missed a little more upside potential, but you captured a really good profit here. Another way to uh, analyze if you should be taking your money off the table or not is to look at for option traders the delta theta relationship and I'm actually going to look at these S&P options here real quick and just kind of show you what the delta gamma and theta are so these options for the SPX have about seven days until expiration here and you can see that if I scroll all the way down on this chart here that the delta and theta for these are actually reversed right now. So you can see that, let's say for these January 1275 puts, we have a delta of about $33, but theta is about $60. So you can see that for every $33 we make per day on a move, we could possibly lose $60 on this trade. So you can see that time decay has now overwhelmingly uh, taken over the majority of the loss in this in this stock option. So unless you think the S&P is going to move dramatically overnight or in the next couple days, it's worth it to get out once your delta to theta relationship gets uh, more higher than one, I guess. Okay, so I hope that was a helpful video for taking profits on stock and options trades. Happy trading.